when we aired on Food Network and we aired on the Travel Channel with Man vs. Food, and then people from England was sending us emails, hey, I want oh, a shirt, I hey, that. man, I, I need sauce. And uh, we're like, yeah, we'll ship it. And yeah. we didn't know how to mass produce and ship and, you know, the, the cost to ship sure. freight. You know, that that was, it was a learning experience. And I, I remember sitting there one time and I had, I had like three pages of stuff I had to ship out. And I was just like, it's going to be a minute. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a minute. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the You Know Adam Sane podcast, where you get to know a little bit more about people, passions, and all things business. Today, sitting across the way is Papa Bucks himself, Mr. <laughs> Jeremiah Johnson. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, Jeremiah, we've known each other for quite some time now. I think, yeah. you know, we actually worked on an event together that was we super did. fun. Uh, but for the viewers that don't know, who is Jeremiah Johnson? Uh, Jeremiah Johnson is the owner of Papa Buck's Barbecue. Uh, we have locations in Metter and Vidalia. Uh, been in the barbecue game since 2007. Okay. Um, started as a mom and pop restaurant and kind of grassroots. And uh, we just took the idea and ran with it. And uh, we've been, been pretty successful with it. Amazingly successful. I mean, <laughs> I, I actually uh, make my way out to Metter to yeah. uh, pick up barbecue just because the barbecue <laughs> that you have is just absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, I think that the work that you put in and yeah. all the experiences that I've had with you, yeah. uh, it's just been spot on every single time. So Thank you. Uh, I want to make a statement in here. I want to see kind of like what your reaction is. Okay. Uh, it's never been a better time to be a restaurant than 2021. Um. I would say that that's a pretty accurate statement. If, yeah. If if you're in the game, um, you know it's uh, there's not a lot of down downtime or down you know moments. Uh, keeps you on your toes. Yeah. As uh, as I think you know as as well. That's right. But um, it can be challenging. Yeah. Very challenging. Uh, I think right now, you know, even in the restaurants that I'm in, there there have been a lot of challenges. You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, labor. Um, just Big has one. been one one of the biggest ones. I, I think, yeah. you know, I was uh, speaking to the Kiwanis Club um, just a few days ago, mm -hmm. and all the um, older heads in there were really kind of like asking me, like, why don't people want to work anymore? And I was like, you know, as yeah. a, as a as a matter of fact, I'm kind of dealing with that on my end. And you know, that's uh, that's part of it. You know, with 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 the day's economy, um, you know, if you don't have good people in mm -hmm. your business and, and surrounding you. Um, it's hard to do good yeah. business, uh, and you got to take care of your people. That's right. Uh, the bottom line is, you know, these people are coming to work day in and day out. Yeah, uh, you got to take care of them, and and with the the price of living at where it's at now, it's you know it's it's a challenge. That is a big challenge for a small restaurateur like myself. You know, mm -hmm. like you, we we can't compete with the the Chick Fil A's and sure. the McDonald's. Uh, we don't get national pricing per se, but. Uh, there are ways to get creative and and to to try to benefit your employees. You know, to make a, a fun working environment. You know, nobody wants to go to work and just you know just hate their job. That's true. And uh, if you feel that way, then I'm I'm all for personal growth. And yep. I tell people that that come in and work with us, like this may be day one, but you know down the road I want to see I want to see personal growth. I want to see you know growth within us. And then if there's any way I can help you outside of you know, my establishment, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. You know, uh, I'll give good recommendations or good recommendations are, are, are due. And, uh, you know, it's just, that's, that's part of it. I've seen guys that started with me and, you know, started in the dish pit and then worked their way up to management. And then, you know, now they're making, you know, six figures selling insurance or, you know, real estate or, yep. and that's fun to watch. That's right. That's to be a part to, of that to journey. To be a part of that journey and watch them grow is, uh, I get a lot of fulfillment and, and uh, gratitude out of out of that side of it, but uh, you know, and then there's you know, people that that uh, they stick with you and, yep. and 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 they may give you ten, fifteen years, and 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 still those people, uh, you have to treat them just as well as you know everybody else. You know, um, yeah, keep them motivated. I think you know a, a common misconception is that restaurant jobs are easy. Yeah. 
and you know they think about it oh you don't need a degree to kind of like you know um i guess like the common term is flip burgers yeah. right like all <laughs> yeah. that that is the what it's been stuck in everybody's head but i i i i want to say in here how to be a really good at your job it's yeah. extremely challenging because number one the stress is high yeah. right when tickets are flying through the window like you're trying to manage all of that all at once Gotta our wear stress, multiple hats. exactly exactly yeah. and then when when it's slow that's actually when the moment where you have to like go go in and look for something else to do yeah. it's an extremely challenging yes. uh, position to to be in and I think it's almost one of the most rewarding positions to be in and being able to yeah. guide people through that experience yeah. uh, let's change kind of like directions right quick and talk tell me about I mean Papa Bucks has been around now for a while yeah um tell me kind of like a little bit about the initial story of papa bucks like when did you become involved with the business um papa bucks was uh was an idea of my father okay um and he was retired um school principal educator okay uh in neighboring emmanuel county um and he always his philosophy and even you know when he was in school and it went on to when he owned restaurants and he was kind of an entrepreneur and, and everything, but he always tell everybody, he's like, you know, let's get up and let's do this for the kids. Like, let's go to work. Let's be there for these kids and let's try to make an impact in their day-to-day -day lives. Jeez. And, um, you know, that, that's, that's kind of something with him being my father that was instilled in me. And, mm -hmm. you know, we work with a lot of young teenagers, a lot of young first time job, sure. um, goers and, and, uh, you know, just to you know try to give back to them uh one thing and we haven't announced this to the public yet but the whole month of july we're gonna do kids eat free i love that uh, at both locations okay. try to give back to uh our, our communities that have supported us in candler county and tombs county and even here in bullet county we get a lot of people that that drive down they've got great barbecue here in bullet county shout out to, to dolan's and yeah. mary beth and them they've done a wonderful job but uh we still get people that that drive, Mr. Lee Hendricks drives, you know, twice, two, two three times a week. And uh, he's a local with us at our Metro location. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we feel like it's just our turn to kind of give back, you know, times are kind of tough right now. People's making decisions at the, at the grocery store, at the, at the fuel pump. And, and, you know, if we can, you know, feed a kid, uh, you know, I feel like that can, we can do our part to kind of I love help, that. help and relieve. So, you know, things like that is, is kind of instilled in our journey, but, and it goes all the way back from the beginning. We started and, you know, me and my dad, we'd open up Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we buy a case of Boston butts. It's eight butts. And we'd probably have two or three left over at the end of the week. Yeah. And now we're cooking, you know, 16 butts a day on average, if not more. And, uh, just to, to watch the growth is, is, has been truly a blessing, uh, for us. And, uh, like I said, it's been grassroots efforts. You know, we, um, marketing, um, Scotty Davis, Davis marketing mm -hmm. did a, did a great job with us for, for a number of years and, and, uh, really helped, you know, build that brand. And, uh, we've just stayed close to, you know, uh, we're a mom and pop mm -hmm. family restaurant. Yeah, we, we we sell good barbecue. That's right, right. Uh, excellent barbecue, amazing barbecue, amazing. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Tell me, tell me. Uh, <laughs> so you know, you said that you worked with. Uh, you did you work directly with your dad? Yep. When we first started, it was it was pretty much my mom, my dad. Uh, I had a friend that helped us, uh -huh. and, and then we had one waitress. Yeah. Um, and how, those, how was that? Was it was um, it? Working with family can be uh, a, a little hard at some times, but in the beginning, you know, that's that's all we had. That's all we knew. Yeah. Um, we just, we'd set goals and, you know, day to day, just we wanted to make our customers feel like they were part of the family. Mm -hmm. um, and we still hold those tendencies today. Um, but it, it's, uh, the game has changed. Yep. You know, we got in in 07 and it was in a, um, a food trailer and we did shows and festivals and, uh, we figured out real quick that uh, if we were real serious about it, brick and mortar, mm -hmm. where we needed to be, we yeah. felt like at the time, and it was it was right. Uh, we moved to Metter in uh, 2009. Um, we were on the wrong side of the bridge. Uh -huh. We jumped the bridge in uh, I want to say 2012. We jumped the bridge and got our spot that we're in currently, and and business you know quadrupled. 
Well, just from switching. Just location. from switching sides. So and, the things what people say, location, location, oh, location. It, it, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for wow. location. How uh, how far? Like just to give like the audience like an idea. Like, are we talking about like three quarters of a mile? Wow. Not even a mile. Wow. Uh, you know, but we're on the side with every other restaurant in Metter. Yeah. Uh, so you know the draw was everything pulls this way. Yeah. Um. So you know. So that, what made you make the move to go to the other side? <sighs> Well, the building came open. Yeah. The building came open, and my dad looked at me, and he said, you know, if we get that building, it's going to be a lot more work, but I think it'll pay off in the end. You know, he was a man of chances and uh, calculated chances at that, but uh, that one paid off for him. Yeah. He got to uh, – we jumped in 2012, and he got to see it kind of take off, and then he passed, unfortunately, mm-hmm. in, in March of, of 13. And uh, – we thought about closing it down. I thought seriously about it um, during that time, during that that period, because um, you know my I never wanted to be in restaurants or barbecue or it's just something that kind of happened. Yeah, uh, I'm grateful that it happened. Now I'm you know I'm, I'm all in. Yeah. Um, but back then you know I graduated with a degree in kinesiology, exercise science. <laughs> Shout out Barry Muncassy. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the C that let me pass. <laughs> uh, but you know I, I never. Um, Physical therapy was was kind of the my, path, the path, and I got into barbecue, and then that happened with my dad, and then I just felt like I needed to stay close to my family. Mm-hmm. Um, my grandmother was still alive, wasn't in good health, uh, so I just felt like I needed to stay close to them to help. And did you ever um, work in in your field? The, no, you, you didn't. Never. I graduated from Georgia Southern, and the next day we opened up and and met her. Okay. So uh, it was kind of barbecue, and I, I I had bought in, and I had seen you know we we can grow this. Yeah. And then uh, after my dad passed, um, we ran it, and uh, Jason Krim yeah. Krim came back on board with us, and 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 stayed with us for a good six seven years. Yeah. And and uh, we righted the ship. We were able to open up a second location. Amazing. And and Vidalia, and 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 grew it to what it is today, and and um, you know it's. Like we talked about earlier, you know, the, the restaurant game is always evolving and with the pandemic and mm-hmm. now with gas prices and wages and food costs, I mean, it can really leave your head spinning. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you've had, you know, some turbulent times, you know, what have been some of the uh, successes that you've experienced oh, man. for, for um, Papa Bucks? You know, well, one for me kind of like you know, it catches my attention is the one that, you know, from a national level, mm-hmm. like people were able to see. So for those that don't know, right, like yeah. you got onto a show. So tell me a little yeah. bit about how that transpired. So our first TV appearance was with Honey Boo Boo. Mm. Uh, for the ones that don't remember, Google it. <laughs> YouTube it. Okay. Um, and they came down and, you know, my dad was like, you know, any publicity is better than no publicity. Sure. And we did the show, and it was uh, it was eye opening to see how these professional camera crews and all this, yeah. how these shots are rehearsed and, and everything. That that was pretty neat. Uh, and then the show aired, and somebody from the L.A. Times wrote a clip, yeah, about how uh, backwoods Southern, you know, all this stuff in the middle of nowhere, four pound barbecue sandwich, and we was like, wow. Yeah. Caught the attention of the L.A. Times. Yes. Uh, so yeah. at that time, the four, the the Pigzilla was, was already a thing. So it was it was fairly new within a year. Okay. Um, it had just started gaining a little publicity. Well, Honey Boo Boo led us to be on uh, the Discovery Channel. Uh, Food Network came calling um, after that, and then uh, the last show we were on was Man vs. Food. That's right. Uh, and Casey White came down and attempted Pigzilla, uh, failed at it. A great guy. Casey yeah. is a is a what you see on TV is uh-huh. he's the same off. He, he's awesome. just as nice. Humble, That's awesome. Humble fella, um, but he wasn't able to eat it, and and that kind of uh, was a, a springboard into the the national uh, spotlight. And you know our merchandise sales like our sauce and our our sauce game is still strong. We're we're shipping it wow. everywhere. That's amazing. Um, so be pre predating all this publicity, mm-hmm. was there anything was there those sales there or was it online sales not as much. Okay. Uh most of what we were doing was out of the out of the location the storefront. Um but then when when we aired on Food Network and we aired on the Travel Channel with Man vs Food and then people from England was sending us emails. Hey, I want oh, a shirt. I hey, that. man, I, I need sauce. And uh, 
We are like, yeah, we'll ship it. And yeah. We didn't know how to mass produce and ship and, you know, the, the cost to ship sure. freight. You know, that, that was, it was a learning experience. And I, I remember sitting there one time and I had, I had like three pages of stuff I had to ship out. And I was just like, it's going to be a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a minute. I, I, I've got to make sure I've got this inventory. I've got to get labels and boxes. And, you know, it was, it was fun. It was yeah. learning. And that was a, a, a growth for us. And now, you know, people, uh, they go on our, our website and they can order sauce online. And, yeah. and um, COVID kind of hindered our, our progress there a little bit because so. the manufacturing of, we, we were in a, a plastic uh, bullet bottle. Mm -hmm. Well, plastic went out the door yep. when COVID started and you had to go to glass. Yeah. That changed shipping rates, yep. you know, then food costs. Yeah. And then if you could get the product, but now it's, it's been good, but now we're starting to see shortages of uh, stuff again. So it's like a revolving door, but you know, you can only, uh, you got to be creative. Yeah. You've got to find ways to adapt and to overcome and it's a small restaurant. I mean, that's for me, that is, uh, a lot of the joy is, is, these obstacles that we face day to day is is how can we create, how can we overcome, how can we make it, you know, I was reading, I, I just got finished reading a book uh, from um, Jesse Cole, the owner of Savannah yeah. Bananas, yes. Fans First. Oh my God. Amazing. That guy is, is Shout is out to him. Yes. Shout out to him. Yes, he is Are amazing. you a big base, baseball oh, fan? Yeah. Yep, you, we're you, actually, were, you were just at the games. I was just at yes, the game. And, tell and, me. And we're going back uh, Tuesday. So we went, um, I remember when they first came to town in 2016. Nats? Was this or, the same well, Nats? They sold it. Okay. So, so, so Cole and them, they bought it, and then they renamed them the Savannah Bananas. And yep. I remember, and I was like, Savannah Bananas? I said, they'll never make it. Yeah. They'll never make in, it. In, in your mind? In my mind, I was like, that's, that's not Stupid. baseball. <laughs> and then uh, 2020 hit, and my wife said, let's go to Savannah Bananas game, and I hear they're fun. And I was like, sure, let's take the kids. And when I went and I saw the product mm. and what he was doing, I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. I'd rather I'd rather watch the Bananas play than watch the Braves. Uh, it's more entertaining for their fans. And I just got finished reading his book, and it was, uh, you know, just the way he treats – he doesn't call them customers, he calls them fans. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, and, and the, I, that kind of rubs off on us. Like I'm, I had a meeting this morning with my crew, and I'm like, how can we make our dining experience – More fun. More fun. Mm. How can we, you know – make people laugh how can we bring smiles to people's faces and and do it with with food and and, and within our setting mm -hmm. you know not trying to go off the beaten path but how can we be better at what we do uh to make people's lives better you're um, gonna have dancing people at the restaurant hey, soon we may. hey I may, we may that's even, what i we want may to even see. have comedians in there roasting folks who knows, <laughs> who knows? Um, but you know we've we've thrown some ideas on, on the on the wall and see if they stick. And, sure. Uh, the only way to figure out if something's going to work is to physically do it. Do you um, think that is the natural, I guess, evolution? Because, you know, back in the day, yeah. you could open a restaurant, just put out a good food product, yeah. and, you know, that was all you needed to do. Then I think came the era of like, oh, customer service, customer service, cu customer service, right? Like you have to have good customer service, yes. which I think that you guys do a phenomenal job at. Yeah. Now... It's almost like it needs to be you take entertainment, yeah. right? Like you know, people, uh, somebody asked me the other day, I had a young kid ask me, he said, what's some advice or what's a profession I should get into? And I was like, you know, just get up and go to work every day, find something that you enjoy doing. I said, but you know, a, a area that's, it's been hit, you know, people have criticized the service industry for, for the past two years. Yep. And, uh, but everything's going towards service. Look yep. at Uber Eats yep. and the more convenient you can make it, uh, the better off the people like it. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, service industry, I think, will will, will survive. Yep. Uh, it'll be there. Uh, you kind of got to have some thick skin to work in it. But, yep. um, you know, that that's kind of my, my forefront of thinking is, you know, I'm not looking at, used to, like you said, you could look at sales and if you've got a good product, it sells itself. Yep. But now it's... Uh, times are changing, man. Yeah, uh, you got to stay on the, on the, the press forward, or you know you can get left behind real easy in this game. Yeah, uh, not a lot of restaurants. You know, you look at statistics. 
Uh, you know, they say you're established after five years, yep. but a majority don't even make it That's past right. one. That's right. And then after that five, what well, the chances of making it to ten are slim to none. That's right. Um, so, and you, we've been lucky. We've we've been in Metter for for ten plus years, going on twelve. And, yeah. Uh, been in Vidalia, September will be five. So, um, what do you think that you do differently that you know has led to your success? Just for the most part, we we, we keep it simple. Mm. Uh, we try to make sure that our prep is on point day in and day out. Our our cooking routines are the same, um, and and customer service. You mm. know, let's let's keep those tea glasses filled. Yep. Let's make sure that we're they're taken care of. Um, you know, a lot of people. They may know, they may not. We switched to full serve, or we switched from full service to self service in our Metro location, at the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. I made it five months in and said, "Hey, this, this ain't us." Yeah, you know what? What? We're, what kind of like led you guys? <sighs> I, 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 at least let's kind of like back that up because it's interesting that you switched it. Yeah. What, what was the initial reason why you switched it? Just counter service is a little easier to run Mm -hmm. than self-service and we had just been through so much the past two years that uh, that's how our Vidalia location runs yeah but and it runs great down there but it's a little bit different setup but those girls still they go out and they wait on their their customers they do uh i think more and better our name was built on customer service Mm -hmm. and then when we switched to you know self-serve and we hand you the cup uh, you know, people people like to be waited on. Sure. Um, and, you know, we, we talk with people and we listen to the people within our community and they're like, you know, we like it the old way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if that's what people like, then, hey, let's let's give them. We, we, we experimented. We tried. Didn't really work. We didn't like it. Um, so we went back to doing uh, last week was our first full week back. So, how was uh, it? It was great. Yeah. Uh, you know, knocking a little rust off of the, <laughs> the – we, we've got some new waitresses that kind of got thrown in the fire a little bit. And, yeah. And, you know, it, full service is, is, is can be a little challenging, sure. especially when those tickets start flying. But yeah. then, you know, that's that's what I like. I yeah. like the chaos. I, yes. It, controlled chaos is, is – I love it. But yeah. Like you said, when when it slows down, mm-hmm. then, you know, we've got to clean, we've got to prep, we've got yeah. to get ready because they can hit you again in, yes. in a matter of seconds. So. You know, things like that um, I enjoy and, and, you know, the people like the the, the person-to-person contact. Like mm-hmm. if they want, you know, fast food, they're getting in a drive through That's right. Uh, we've got a drive through in and, and, and both locations and we have certain people and they'll never step foot in a restaurant and they're drive through folks. Yeah. And that's great. Um, that was one thing we did at the beginning of 2020 is we adapted, you know, yeah. we, we saw the had problem, to. had to, we weren't going to make it. And, you know, 2022 is not, you know, that much different. Yes, prices are going up and, and but it's not just in food and gas, it, it's across the board. Yeah. I think people will, uh, you know, humans have a, a we adapt, that's yes. what we do. That's right. We adapt and we evolve, and uh, we'll we'll make it through it. But uh, it's uh, some days is you've, you've got to be creative. Sure. So. How about how about for you know advice that you would have? Maybe there's some entrepreneurs out there, or mm-hmm. restaurateurs out there that are aspiring to you know open up their own joint, if yeah. you will. You know what what advice would you have for them to uh, get, get that done? You know, uh, learn as much as you can. You know, if, if, if you want to open up a, your own restaurant and you don't have any background in it, you know, go to go to people that, that are in this game and, and talk to them and, and just ask them, say, hey, sir, can I sit down with you and, and uh, you know, talk with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, when my dad died, uh, Ricky Patrick um, and, and met her, um, I called him and I said, Ricky, can I talk to you? Yeah. And, you know, most people think, oh, they're they're competing businesses mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and that wasn't the case. Ricky said, Come on in. I what restaurant does he own? Ricky owned Bevrix. Oh, okay. And and Joe Max. Uh, I've heard across. so much about that. Uh, yeah. And uh, recently sold uh, Bevrix, and now he's full time in, in Joe Max. Okay. Um, and they have um, I think Sweet Tea in Port Wentworth as well. Yep. So Ricky's been in it. Great, great guy, great fella, and, and he's helped me out a lot. And mm-hmm. in the beginnings, I had questions after my dad died unexpectedly, like. You know, I'm 26 years old, still kind of green. I know how to run the barbecue, but I don't know how to run the business. Sure, side. sure. And you know, he 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 helped me in that. And you know, uh, you know, I'm I'm forever grateful that he, you know, led me in that direction. If somebody that's wanting to start new, like go out and talk to some of these guys mm-hmm. and and get in and roll your sleeves up and go to work. Uh, knowledge is power. There's so many tools out there from you know from podcasts. Yeah. Uh, 
YouTube. Yep. I mean, you can even use TikTok for ideas today. I mean, it's, <laughs> I was watching the other day, and uh, I had one of my one of my servers was trying to do something, and they didn't go to YouTube. They went they to TikTok. They didn't go to Google. They went to TikTok. That's crazy. And they pulled it up, and that's that's Where it's at? their their Google. Yeah, I'm a Google guy. Yeah, I'm a YouTube guy. Yeah. They they use TikTok. That's right. So, uh, and you know, stay in. Uh, social media pass like we do a TikTok, sure and, and and we get that younger generation but um as for anybody that wants to get in it like now times may seem tough but you can still yeah there's money to be made that's right um, you've got to be smart with it and and it takes a lot of due diligence people you know they're going to come and they expect the first time to be the same as the second yep. second third and if there's a drop off you know it, it to make a repeating customer it takes about three to four trips that's right and and um uh, so interesting times to say the least. Yeah. For you, you know, how do you identify talent? You know, one of the things that I often have to do is within an interview, mm. I am supposed to tell oh, yeah. or or like understand if this individual that's sitting across the way is going to be beneficial to my organization mm. or not beneficial. Yep. So how do you kind of like what are the questions that you ask to try to get a feel for you know, you know how effective they're going to be. Uh, you know, we'll we'll sit down and we kind of start the the process off is just getting to know each other, asking questions, and and uh, seeing past experiences, calling references, stuff like that. Um, but some things that I like to do is we may give them a walk around the restaurant, or we may I may tell the waitress, "Hey, go put some papers on the some." paper towels on the ground and we'll walk by and let me see if they'll pick it up or they'll say hey you know this is somebody left this trash here like do they notice stuff like yeah. this do they do they have a background in the kitchen like we may bring them back there and and uh, show them kind of what we do and concepts and just see if see if they pick up on stuff or they just let it slide yeah and you know if you pick that piece of trash up off the ground volumes mm -hmm. Yes. Volumes. You just you just went high on the scoreboard. That's right. So, you know, little things like that, you know, I could interview you right now and you could tell me everything I wanted to hear, yeah. but actions speak louder than words and um you know I love that. I, I, love I like that. to get people I like <laughs> to give people a chance. If you come in and you tell me you need to work, you have priorities, you have kids, you have bills. Yeah. Um, you know, you need to work. I'll give you a chance sure. and, and kind of we do like a two week, you know, training seminar and we're going to school you up in these two weeks. And, you know, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, we'll help you find something I, else. I want to speak on that because I, I feel like that is it, it. It's so much different when people are working to survive mm -hmm. versus working for a little extra money. Yeah. 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 The the work ethic that's in there is is vastly different. Right. Yes. But but I, I think that, you know, the, the people that that how do we get people that, you know, don't have to work mm -hmm. to work at that same level or, or even half the level, to be honest yeah, with just, you? Like, come on, just give me show, something. Show just give me something. And, you know, and, and we, we can, you know, we give charts, we give lists and yeah. tasks. Yeah. And, you know, say, hey, look, you know, you're going to be on you're going to be on fry station. So at the end of the night, let's make sure that we reload, reprep, you know, leave it like you found it. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. So um, challenging workers day to day mm -hmm. is 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 something that that we throw around a lot and try to keep these guys motivated because you know it can be very monotonous running on the line doing the same thing day in and day out but you know those small details like trimming the rib tips you know making sure we brine our chicken the yeah. right way and making sure we get the proper brine like those small attention to details go a long way in keeping customers coming back through the door or i should say fans yeah um so you know, it, 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 it is challenging. And when today's workforce with, you know, everybody's pushing $15 minimum wage yep. and stuff like that, and, and, and minimum wage needs to be way higher than what it is. And I feel like most people in the restaurant industry, if they're still in business, they have adapted and, and they're paying mm -hmm. for good help. But, you know, I've, I've had, you know, I've had some high school kids come in there and they, First question is, what's the pay? Yeah. And if you say, well, look, we're going to start you out at $10 an hour, they'll get up and walk out. Yeah. And I just remember when I was, you know, when, when we were young and, and you know, 725 was I was just glad was to sit, yeah. sit down with just you. Just yeah. get a job. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, 
I don't know if social media has caused that. You caused think that because a lot of these kids, I mean, it, it's there's so much money out there, but then they get on TikTok and they get on Facebook and they just see some of these guys just making this money. Sure. But what they've got to understand is everybody can't be that person. Sure. You know, you, they've got to start somewhere. Everybody has their own path. Yeah, everybody has their own path. And, you know, if, if you want to be a TikTok influencer, then, hey, that's great. Let's, yeah. Let's go with it. But uh, if you want to make money right now, like come in here and learn a trade. And, and um, there's so many. Oh, man. two. I got, I got a great story here for you. I've got two kids right out of high school in Vidalia. Came in and uh said i needed a job so we hired them yeah started working with them now they're they're my they're my a plus yeah they're my rock stars they're my managers yeah and uh they're like you know we we want to better ourselves and i was like look man learn a trade like mm -hmm. go out and you know learn a skill and they went to school to be welders both of them just got all their certificates to be welders and now they can you know apply for these jobs and you know, stuff like that just makes me that that's that's awesome to me. Is yeah, they came in, they've worked with me for you know the better part of three years now, and and why they've working, they're going to school, and I've got a, a degree to to be a, a welder, um, and that that that's just awesome. Yeah, there, there's the money that can be made in that in, yeah. in construction right now. Like people, I know they talk about the housing market, and they can't find people to to build houses or sure. do this, do that. And, um, you can pretty much name your price. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Um, and, so. and I think they did all of that just because of the, I guess the, um, the work ethic that was instilled, like learning from, you know, the restaurant industry. So the restaurant industry is not necessarily, you know, always where you're going to potentially end up, yeah. but the way that you carry yourself and the way that you work in the industry speaks volumes for the rest of oh, your yeah. life. Yeah. So if you, it, I, I often see it like, and you can tell, you know, I, I, we're, we're, we've been around it so much that you can tell if someone's slacking off or oh, at yeah. they're putting in work. Yeah. But those people that put in work, I always try to, you know, invest in them. Yeah. I, you know, I'll try to, you know, give them tips of how I would do something, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and give them that experience at a, at a faster rate than mm -hmm. them having to do it themselves, yes. um, which is extremely uh, valuable. Um, you know, before we before we go, I, I have to ask, you know, what is the future of Papa Bucks look like? So you mentioned a little bit about kind of like looking and scouting out different locations. What's kind of like the future? Do you have that kind of like mapped out right now? Um, you know, we've we've got some some ideas and, and, and some things on the back burner right now. Right now we're 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 uh we're focusing on our meta and our Vidalia location, uh trying to see you know, food cost is, is crazy right now and, and, and just trying to really, if we can make the next six months, I think if we can get to 2023, we'll have a better understanding of where we stand in the economy, what it's going to look like in the future. But, um, you know, within the next five years, we could have three or four or five of them. Mm. Um, they may not be brick and mortars. Sure. You know, they may be food trucks or they may like be a, a different venue somewhere <laughs> else or, you know, yeah, food trucks is... It's fun. I've got some ideas, but that's another podcast. <laughs> but, you know, stuff like that, like I've got a, I've got a six-month goal. I've got a, a year goal, and, and um, uh, I've, got, I've got young, up-and-coming people that genuinely care yeah for the restaurant i've got a i've got a nucleus of managers yeah and they're hungry yeah and i want to continue to you know exercise their brains sure and, you know come up with ideas it may you know just because we fail doesn't you know yeah mean nothing we'll learn from it and uh you know a failure can be uh you know a million dollar idea sure down the line sure um me and my father had plenty of them Love that. Pigzilla was was not meant to be Pigzilla. It wasn't. Uh, we were looking at doing a wing competition, and we tried it, and it was like, ah, oh, this ain't doing nothing. And my daddy said, what about a big sandwich? And I said, let's try it. Yeah. And, you know, pigs. Our, our eating competition was going to be wings. Yeah. And that was kind of a failure, so then we went to the sandwich, and then it that – Took off. Took off. Took off. You know, little, little ideas, like attention to details, um, but just really like there's money to be made out there, man. I know yeah. people's – the inflation and all this, but like, get out there and grind, find something you like doing. And if you enjoy it, the money will come. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's kind of, it's kind of where we're at right now. Love it. How do you keep, how, how do people keep, uh, keep in touch with you? Where's the best uh, way? You know, through TikTok, through yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Um, 
you know, you can go to PapaBucks.com. We order online, both mm-hmm. locations. We'll, we'll ship you soft shirts, whatever. Um, you know, you can keep up with us through there. And, um, you know, my, my personal sale number is attached to, to our uh, online center. So if we have any problems, you know, you I, I like call. for people to be able to reach me. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, when you call certain places, they don't get to speak, you sure. know, to the, to the person in charge. That's right. I had a young lady call me the other day and, and, uh, we were actually closed for remodeling. And, uh, before we could turn an online order and off, she'd put in an order. Sure. And, uh, she called me today asking, you know, when when will she see it back? And I was able to answer those questions. Yeah. She's like, and you're the you're the owner. I said, you know, yes, ma'am, we are. I, I like to stay on top of these things. She's like, you never get to talk to the, the That's man right. in charge. That's right. You can't be there to talk to everybody. Yeah. But, you know, you can be available to handle the, you know, the mess ups, the hiccups. That's and, right. You know, make, make it right with people. You That's know, right. We're, we're all human. We're going to make mistakes. But if I make a mistake, at least let me, you know, try to make it up to you and, and uh you don't see that with a lot of corporate uh, restaurants. They make a mistake. It's just it is what it is. You That's know, right. McDonald's gives you six nuggets <laughs> instead of ten. You just you just, <laughs> you just short take four. It. You just take it. You know. Yes, yeah. um, but with us, you know, we try to make it right and and uh, you know create a good environment for for our our fans and then for our employees and. Uh, that's kind of what we're rocking with. Yeah. Well, Jeremiah, thank you so much for kind of like spending some time, but also thank you for the great barbecue Appreciate and as, as well as the inspiration behind everything that is that you do. Same. You know, it's rare to find uh, good business people out there, mm. you know, and the, the fact that you are so invested, not only with the quality of food that you're giving to the community, mm. but also the quality of people that you're putting out speaks volumes. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.